I'm going to come up here and create a new scene. Just do a full copy, and I'll just call this the uh, int for now. And in here, I've got like an extra version now of everything. So I'm just going to turn poo off because I don't need that. And let's just have a look at how interpolation works. So let me draw a circle. There we go, a circle. That's on frame one. Let me go to frame 20. I'm going to press Control End just to crop that area. And I'm going to press Home just to bring that center. And I think I'll zoom in a little bit too by holding Control and middle clicking and moving forward. OK, there we go. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. First of all is edit mode. I can select my circle and drag it over here. Now, auto key has been switched off from earlier, so don't forget to turn that back on. Otherwise, nothing will happen. There we go. All that happened there was this one got moved over there. So just press undo. So that goes back. Auto key switched on now. As I drag it over, you can see the leftover. Now, the interpolate tool will fill in the middle bit, and that's this option here. If I give that a click and drag, you'll see that Blender will fill in the middle for me. Simple as that. And now I've got that filled in. Right, so that's one way of using it, by copying your original, which is a very good way of using it. Let's have a look at the other way. The other way is to simply draw your other circle. So let's just say we'll draw the other circle there. Come to frame 10, go to interpolate, click and drag, and Blender will take this curve, which is a completely different curve when you think about it, and it will morph it into that curve slowly over the course of those frames. So let's just say we'll put that in the middle there. And just to demonstrate how good that is, if I um, come into draw mode now and draw something completely different, let's just say I'll draw a triangle, it will morph the circle into the triangle as we go along. And to my knowledge, I don't actually need to go into edit mode to do that. I do need to go into edit mode to get a few more options, but really I can just draw and interpolate right here in draw mode. And you can see it'll do that in between position for me and it'll morph whatever's here to there. So what's happening here? Let's just talk about that. The way this works is that in Grease Pencil, on layer one, which you have here, layer one being lines, let's just change that for clarity, layer one, and we'll get rid of fills. On layer one, frame one, we have one stroke object. What is a stroke? It's basically a Bezier curve of points, just like you'd see in uh, software like Illustrator or any other vector-based software. It's just a line of points. And when you have a complete line of points like this, all joined together, they make up one stroke. And Blender labels that stroke number one. It labels it stroke zero, but let's just say one for clarity. So that is stroke number one on frame number one. On frame number 20, this triangle is stroke number one. And all Blender's interpolation tool does is it says, this is number one, that is number one. I'm going to put something directly in the middle of the two of them. So what happens when you have multiple shapes on one layer? So let's go over here to number one, go back to draw mode, and I'll put a, um, I'll put a triangle here. And then over here on frame 20, I'll put a circle. There we go. What happens now? Because as far as Blender's concerned, this is now stroke number two, and this is now stroke number two. So when we come over here to the middle to do an interpolation, look at that. Number one goes to number one, number two goes to number two. And it's because of the order they were drawn in. Now you can change this order after you've done it to get different interpolation results. So let's go to edit mode and with the circle selected, I know I drew this first, and then I drew the triangle second. So the triangle is above this circle in terms of layers. So let me take this and let me go to arrange. <coughs> There's two ways to get to arrange. You can go to stroke, arrange, and you can do bring to front, center back, bring forward, send backwards. Or you can come over to stroke mode here, and you can right click and arrange that way instead. So I'm going to take this one, and I know it's at the back at the moment, so I'm going to bring it to the front. And by doing that, by bringing that to the front, I've just changed the order of these strokes. So now this is number two, and this is number one. That'll have an impact on the way the interpolation tool works. So let's just see what that impact is. Look at that. 
2 is going to 2, 1 is going to 1. And that is how the interpolation tool works. It's simply a case of what did you draw first, what did you draw second, and then most importantly, what order are they in on the screen? Right, there are other ways to alter the way Blender decides to interpolate these things. So currently, 2 goes to 2, 1 goes to 1. That's fine. Let's say I want to influence the way the interpolation tool calculates things. I can click on only selected up here. I can select the two different strokes that I want Blender to interpolate between. Now I've already got this one selected. I need to be on select box. Now I've already got this one selected. Great. What do I want it to interpolate to? I want it to interpolate to this triangle here. I can't select it because it's not there. It's over here on frame 20. So I need to turn on multi-frame. And when multi-frame switched on, it's asking you which keyframes are in use. So you can select them down here in the timeline. Now I can change my mind about that and I can say deselect the triangle and shift select the circle instead. So now when I go to interpolate mode, the circle interpolates to the other circle. It doesn't have to stop there. We can go further than that. We can say to Blender, this circle interpolate with that triangle and this triangle interpolate with that circle. Over to interpolate. And now they go over to where they're supposed to go. So if you have a lot of stroke objects on the screen at once, that is how you decide which goes where. If you don't have only selected ticked, then it will work it out based on which one you drew first and what order they are in on the screen. Hopefully that was nice and clear. So let's go back to Winnie the Pooh. 